I'll wrap up our discussion of complex numbers, at least for now, with this topic, the absolute value of a complex number. Now, we've learned about absolute value already, and remember how we defined absolute value. It's the distance from the origin, the distance on the number line from the origin. And it's really a simple idea. If you have the number line, say here's 0, and 1, 2, and 3, and negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, the absolute value of the number is simply how far it is away from the origin. So the absolute value of 2, for example, you can see that the number 2 is 2 units away from the origin. So the absolute value of 2 is just 2. Or the number negative 2 is also 2 units away from the origin. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And we write it with this notation. We say the absolute value of 2 is equal to 2 or the absolute value of negative 2 is equal to 2. And we use these two vertical bars just as the notation, the way we write it, to indicate absolute value. Now sometimes people define absolute value as the positive version of a number, or the number without any sign, or the number made into a positive number. And, and that's okay as long as you're dealing with real numbers, but this definition the distance from the origin is, I think, a better definition because this definition applies exactly to real numbers and complex numbers as well. The absolute value of a complex number will be the distance that number is from the origin. But in this case, we're talking about the distance from the origin in the complex plane. So let's look at an example. Let's take the number 4 plus 3i, and we want to find the absolute value of 4 plus 3i. So picture this number in the complex plane. Here's our real axis, and here's our imaginary axis. So 4 means 4 in the, in the, along the real axis and 3 along the imaginary axis. This number in the complex plane sits right here. That's the number 4 plus 3i. The distance from the origin is this distance right there. So how long is that line segment? Well, we can make a little triangle. You can think of this triangle right here, and this side is length 3, and this side is length 4. The hypotenuse, you can probably tell immediately, is going to be 5, because the, the, the distance, that line drawn there in blue, in the light blue here, that distance will just be found as the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that's the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So the answer to the problem here, the absolute value of 4 plus 3i, in this case it turns out to be 5. It's going to just be a real number, because the distance will be measured in units that, that, that would be stated as a real number. That's how long that line segment is. So in general, if you have a complex number, a plus bi, and you take the absolute value of it, that's just going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. One more example here. Let's suppose that we're told to find the absolute value of 2 minus 5i. Well, we can draw this. You don't have to draw this, but you can do it. 2 will be 2 to the right, and minus 5i means 5 down. So we're right down here. Here's the number. We want the absolute value of that number. That will be this distance, the length of that segment. And we just use the Pythagorean theorem. It's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. And that's the square root of 4 plus 25 which is the square root of 29. And we'll leave it like that. You could punch that into your calculator. The square root of 29 is approximately 5.385. But most mathematicians prefer to leave the number in radical form because that's exact. An engineer or physicist might prefer the, um, the decimal approximation. But the point is, the absolute value of the complex number is just the distance. You can find it with a the Pythagorean theorem, and the answer is a real number. It might not be a rational number, but it is a real number. 
And so that's it. We'll wrap up the discussion of complex numbers there. At least for the Algebra 2 level material, complex numbers do show up a lot. If you end up doing something in electrical engineering, for example, they show up all the time. And we'll, um, we'll come back to them also and do a lot of cool stuff with complex numbers in the pre-calculus class. But, um, but for now, we'll, we'll call it quits, and hopefully that gives you a little bit more understanding of the, the need for complex numbers and how they work, and hopefully some appreciation for them as well.